Hey, it's Chris. I just pre-ordered my 2021 iPad Pro. I got the 12.9 inch with two terabytes of storage and 16 gigs of RAM. And in this video, I wanna talk about why. Why did I essentially max this thing out? I say essentially because I didn't get the 5G because I haven't really been going anywhere with the pandemic going on, which I may actually regret because as things open back up, I may wanna pop over to the coffee shop and not have to hop on the local Wi-Fi and not have to tether because tethering can be a battery drain. I mean, to get the obvious out of the way, one reason why I ordered this was to review it with the maxed out specs. So if you do wanna see my upcoming unboxing and full review and comparison videos, make sure you get subscribed. And while obviously this isn't the configuration that your average buyer, even your iPad Pro buyer is going to be going for, I am working on an 11 inch iPad Pro versus fourth gen iPad Air buyer's guide and comparison video, which should be coming out next week. Another great reason to get subscribed. But in this video, I do wanna talk about how I'm going to be integrating this new powerful beast into my personal and professional life. Part of why I ordered this does have to do with some announcements and new features that I expect to be announced at WWDC very soon. I'm not gonna rehash that in this video because I just made an entire video about that subject. So it does play a factor here, but we're not gonna get into it today. You can go check out that video. I'll link it up down below. But I will say though, any software updates that could come down the pipeline in the near or long-term future aside, I still would have ordered this most powerful, most capable iPad Pro because that's just the kind of user that I am. So here's a photo of my current 12.9 inch iPad Pro next to an AR rendition of the new one that I just ordered. And as you can see, I did go with that new white magic keyboard, which I really like the look of, but like you, I do have some doubts of whether or not it's gonna stay clean. I can tell you this though, I've done a great job of keeping my silver and white AirPods Max basically pristine. Cause I have seen some other people complaining about how theirs have gotten dirty. And so I do have some hope for being able to keep mine cleaner for longer. So we'll just have to see how that wears over time. All right, Whew, I think we got all that stuff out of the way. Why did I get this? Is it just about potential future apps or about future proofing? Well, yeah. I mean, that obviously plays into this, but I do have some applications that I wanna to use to push this thing to the max the second that I get it, right out of the gate. One of my favorite iPad Pro apps is Procreate, and they just stuck up a really interesting teaser website for their latest version. And it's basically a little preview of what the new version is going to be able to do on the iPad Pro with the M1 chip. So that's gonna be 11 inch and 12.9 inch. The main takeaway here is that it's gonna perform up to four times faster, four times faster. That's a lot faster considering the last iPad Pro wasn't exactly sluggish. One of the abilities Procreate is showing off here is the ability to preview 3D artwork in AR with realistic lighting and shadow effects, which is one of the more practical uses for AR that I've seen for iPad creators. And for the most pro Procreate experience on my iPad Pro, you know I'm gonna throw on a paper-like screen protector because it really does enhance the drawing and designing experience in a pleasantly tactile way. So Procreate has been my go-to drawing app for a long time, and I'm glad to see them out here leading the charge, saying here's what to expect, but I definitely think we're gonna see a lot of the other heavy hitter pro iPad apps getting similar updates as well. So I'm excited to see how apps like Pixelmator, Affinity Photo, Darkroom, my go-to raw editor, Muse, one of my favorite brainstorming apps and productivity apps, and the Ferrite Pro Recording Studio are gonna be able to utilize this new performance and these new specs to bump up their capabilities as well. And I'm absolutely looking forward to putting this new Liquid Retina XDR display and Thunderbolt port to really get use importing and editing photos from my Sony cameras. Cause I think I've mentioned several times over the last year that I've started to migrate and shift. I used to go to the Mac when it was time to import photos, but it's so enjoyable over on the iPad now that that's kind of become my default. And when I'm not working, of course, I'll look forward to watching some HDR content on this amazing screen, just kicking back on the couch as well. But I personally tend to create more than I consume. So that is not the main reason why I'm getting this. Of course, the thing that dominates my professional work is video editing. 
I get a lot of comments where people are like, oh, these YouTube creators, they don't realize that other people don't do video editing full time. Well, look, what am I supposed to talk about? That's what I do. So that's the experience that I can share with you. But I'm always complaining about no Final Cut Pro on the iPad and how LumaFusion isn't quite where I need it to be to be able to make the switch from Mac-based editing and I get a lot of comments also where people think they know everything about everything and they're like, well, LumaFusion's great for what you do, for your kind of videos. Well, these comments are made by people who just don't know and you don't know till you know. But traditionally, the things that have been limitations for me have been no stabilization, no multicam editing, and those are actually two features that I'm excited to say are coming soon to LumaFusion on the iPad. So I'm really excited about that, but there's some other niche features that I tend to take advantage of that I wouldn't wanna be without for other kinds of videos that are less informational like this video. And I'm talking about things like optical flow and a bunch of different plugins that I heavily rely on. But for the video editing, that's really where that two terabytes of storage and that 16 gigs of RAM is probably gonna come in the most clutch for me. There was an article from Phone Arena that said, the only reason for you to buy a two terabyte iPad Pro is if you're really serious about editing video and plan on using it instead of a MacBook or a PC, and also if you really, really don't like using an external drive for your work. Well, guess what? I really, really don't like using an external drive with my work if I can help it. And I remember when I upgraded my 16 inch MacBook Pro to four terabytes of internal storage, when I got my last configuration, it was so liberating, not having to worry about storage and if I have something with me or not. So I would definitely like to replicate that experience as much as possible on the iPad Pro. Now the thing about storage is this much internal storage is a luxury. It's not really a must have for most people, even most pros but it is a nice option to have for those that would want it. But you're gonna end up paying for extra storage in one way or another, most likely, whoever you are, whether that's internal, external, or cloud. And then we come to audio content. Now, aside from design and drawing or art or video editing or photo editing, which is really where I'll predominantly be making the most use of this new iPad Pro, I do wanna get more into audio stuff on my iPad Pro, podcasting in particular. And what I mean is, I'd love to see where I can try to push podcasting on the iPad Pro versus the Rodecaster setup that I do often use. And in the past, I've shown off this incredible Apogee Mic Plus with the older iPad Pro. And lots of people actually said they thought that sounded way better than my actual microphone for the video. So when you combine your iPad Pro with a great mic and some software like maybe Spreaker or Anchor or Podbean, then you've really got some interesting options. And then, like I've said before, I really enjoy editing my podcast with the Apple Pencil using Ferrite Pro. Now, podcasting and audio production definitely isn't gonna come anywhere close to maxing out the processor, the storage, or the RAM, or anything like that. None of the specs really matter, but it is part of my workflow. And since I will be using the iPad Pro for other things that will be more intensive, then, you know, I, this is just something that I'm gonna be doing here as well, so I wanted to mention it. All right, well, that's gonna wrap it up for this quick little video, just telling you what direction I might take this interesting new iPad Pro in. And so you never know what's coming up with WWDC. I can't wait to get this in my hands, get it unboxed, check out the new accessories, and also do my comparisons, tell you about my favorite apps, uh, all of that stuff, all the usual stuff that you see on this channel, but with this new generation. And I know this was less of a deep dive type of video like I have been doing over the last week and a half. So if you really wanna do a deep dive and go beyond the obvious use cases, for this new iPad Pro and all of these new specs, that's the video that you really wanna watch. And if you missed it, again, I'll link it up down below. That's it for this video. Again, my 11 inch iPad Pro versus iPad Air video is gonna be coming out next week on top of lots of other content. So I'll catch you guys then, later.